Well, it's time. Let's see if we can get this 1944 Ford Ambulance to run. So, I did a little bit of research on these things. The company is called, I, I don't, I'm probably going to say it wrong, Cybert, Seabert, something like that. They're a conversion company or a coach company. They built ambulances and they built uh, hearses. So, that's where these come from. They're more of the lower end from what I read, but... There's really not a whole, whole lot on them, but I'm going to tell you what, I think it's cool. Uh, I don't know production numbers or anything, but I've, I've looked them up. I found that they, I, so far, I've found five. Like, I say I found five. There's one that was, I guess, restored. There was one that was totally, totally junk, and it was taken to an auction. And then there was one more. So that's three. So, okay, so maybe I found four. I thought it was five. It was four. But uh, there's there's not a whole lot of information on them. But that's that really don't matter. It's, at the end of the day, it's not a big deal. But before we pull this in the shop and do a whole lot of stuff, first things first, we are going to try cleaning this out. We're going to get the leaf blower, blow a lot of this out. I put a support in there for the roof piece and everything. But we're going to try to get this cleaned out. It's a little windy out here. I do have my gloves and i got a face mask and we're gonna try to get this thing cleaned out as best as we can i use the forklift i drug drug it to the end of the driveway drug it out here so when i blow it all out it goes everywhere else but before we go over this thing fully we're gonna get cleaned out and then we'll talk more about it see what's all here what's missing and see what we're gonna do with it see the plant but first things first we clean it because it's disgusting and i don't want this stuff in the shop Usually I don't care too much, but I really, I just, I don't know what's in this thing, okay? I just, I just don't know. So we're going to get out what we can get out, then we'll blow it out with the leaf blower and do the same thing up at the front. Defeats the whole purpose of everything I just did. Okay, yeah, just wipe it. Uh, I'm gonna go get the leaf blower. I'll blow all this stuff out of here. Uh, it actually cleaned out. I was able to roll up the carpet, so I was able to get a lot of stuff out, so that worked out pretty good. Uh, feel a lot better having this in the shop with all of that out. And then we'll jump to the front, do the front, then work on getting this thing put into the shop. Not bad, not bad. A lot of spider webs, but we can get that with a shot back. Uh, clean out some stuff in the front, blow out the front too, and that shit ought, that ought to do it. What is that for? Oh, that's rear lights. A lot of this good wood, I think what I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap it in metal and go that route. But you know, that's down the road. These are our sirens. Rear, rear. Spark plugs. No good. Come here. There's two hoses that come from the back. It's interesting. What are those are for? I don't think these. No, this don't have AC or nothing. That's interesting. Interesting. I'm seeing a lot of differences between this and Tombstone. Because it's the only other one I really ever looked at. 
something uh, asbestos in my eye. Uh, I don't know if a lot of it has to do with like being a panel wagon and then the way they, they stretch them from being a panel wagon. I don't know. I don't know what the difference is between the two. And also half ton to one ton. Uh, our tombstone is a ton of and it's just an eight ball on it. <laughs> Squirrel. Got an eight ball. I am gonna keep this engine transmission for a future project. What that project is, I don't know. But now I gotta buy one for the engine transmission. That's how projects work, right? I mean, that's what I'm saying. So, I'm gonna open the hood, blow out the engine bay, and then we should be ready to move this thing inside. Uh, it's pretty bad. Okay, we got it cleaned up pretty good. Like I said, we looked in here earlier, looks good. Uh, our main area of concern is gonna be this roof stuff after we get it running, but we'll come back to that. Uh, I got some stuff I gotta move around in the shop. I need to move the Duke forward and get it back in his little cubby hole for a little bit and get Gilligan out and then we'll get this in there and we'll start working on this. Well, we got the ambulance in the shop. Let's take a moment and let's look at this thing. Let's see what we got going on here and what we really need to do. I got it on the lift. First things first. So I was looking at it. We got a little bit of rust right there on the hood. But that spear comes off. We can fix that. Not gonna worry about that. We got a little bit more rust going on down here at the bottom. So I was looking at it the way these were built, they didn't really roll edges or build it back to them. So this is a front piece. I'm pretty sure I can rebuild it on the metal brake. I'm going to have to pull it off and see how straight all of this is. Maybe just weld in a piece at the bottom or just bend a whole new piece and weld it in. I know I want to take all this wood and I want to build it out of metal. Same thing over here with this piece. And then we got these sweet cabinets. We'll come back to the cabinets. Pristine. Full spare. We need a spare. I need to get it off of here. I will say, one thing I do not like, I do not like these colors. I'm not a fan. They're, they're not my color. I know a lot of people like teal and stuff. I'm not a fan. And as you saw in the last video, the shrine for the Shriners Hospital is what we're assuming not 100% sure, but that's what we're assuming. Come back over here. Vendors are all in good shape. Everything's all here. Nothing too crazy. Glass isn't broke. I I feel like that's in between the laminate, but that's definitely stained. I like that. Drip rail, done. Done for. But we'll come back to that, see if we can fix it. Anybody know where we can get some hinges for these things? Those hinges are no longer hinging. The bottom ones are still hinging. This one's good. I cut the head of the pin off, but I'll replace those. The bottom of the doors, they're not super rusted out. Not enough where, actually that's not even rusted through. I guess that was where the seal was. Not bad. This one, not bad. This roll pan, not even worried about it. I'm gonna leave it like that so we're going on the highway. We don't have any wind draft through here and it's slowing us down, messing up our MPGs. Inside, we'll get to that. But, bumper looks good. I have it on the lift. <laughs> That'll hold it, you know? Yeah, moving on. This fender, really, I mean, the the body of the panel wagon itself really seems to be in great shape. The doors that Siebert built and stuff, really not in great shape. So what I'm figuring here is though, if you look, let me get over here. This section of the door right here is the same here and it's the same back there. So, I know where two of these trucks are, and I'm hoping, is that all the way through? It's getting close. 
might be i don't know i'm hoping i can cut that section out of the of a donor and weld it into there and we'll be good there i haven't got this door open yet but we're getting there this bottom piece on this one looks pretty good that that bottom corner is not very good running boards they're in good shape all the way down looking good let's lay under here see what we can find i mean this thing is really complete and i will say there's the frame extension so like i was saying they took a normal panel wagon they extended it and you can see they just capped it and i was looking that looks like i welded it i mean it's it's Simon's Powerhouse approved already. But the wheelbase of this is 149. So I haven't decided if I'm gonna build a whole new chassis or if I'm gonna try to make this work. I haven't, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So it's pretty complete. I mean, gas tank's here. That thing's probably, I don't know, it's probably pretty bad. Probably pretty bad. Oh, we we got some rust on the back side of this running board. Why? So you can see, so this is the inner step of the extension. Okay. So that's, I don't know, I'm gonna have to tear more into this as we go. But steering's here, tires look good on this side. Yeah, we just wanna look at that. Uh, plenty of tread. Steering's all here. Oh, wow. Look at that. That is, that is how you fix an exhaust. All right. Uh, wow. Starter's here. Got some insulation. That tire's good. Looks great. Exhaust isn't rusted out all the way down. Goes a mile back there. But, that's enough under here. Oh, one thing I want to point out that I discovered or saw that was pretty neat. The license plate on this, September of 1991. If you think about it, I mean, yes, don't get me wrong. It's 30, over 30 years ago, but this is a 1944 and it was last registered in 1991. That's really not that long ago, in my opinion. I mean, some people are like, yeah, it's 30 years ago, that's a long time ago. But for something from 1944, that's it's kind of impressive. And like I said, we believe it came from the Shriners, we're assuming the Shriners Children's Hospital, but we're not totally sure on that. But I have it up on the lift. I'm gonna let it down a little bit and we'll take a little better look inside, see what we got going on. See what we got for engine. I gotta get this forklift out of here. After cleaning it out, it's really, uh, it's really not that bad. It got air horns. Here's a little pull valve for that. Gotta make that work still. But colors are weird on this thing. Like the dash is blue. The doors are white, the fronts, I don't know. But, it only has 19,000 miles. It's pretty sweet. Choke. It's got this cool little plaque. What's that for? This thing's got knobs and buttons and everything everywhere. What is that, on, off? I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna figure it out. But got the we I don't even remember what you call these lights. The map not map lights. Patrol lights. See, I gotta get new garnish moldings for the inside. Hey, rear view mirror. Look at that. How you doing? I gotta fix this piece on the dash. I'm pretty sure these dashes don't unbolt. Yeah, see, they have made part of the cab. These are important. They hold the uh, the wind lacing down. But inside, you got a sweep of eight volt. 
We got clutch. Yep, got brake. I mean, if your brake's a rock. Gas pedal? That's free. What is that? What is, what is that? I don't even know what that is. That's something. Is that to rest your foot on? It's interesting. Bright. Oh, this is for the bell. You best believe I'm gonna be using that a lot. This glass needs to be replaced. Uh, side windows. Oh, we got a. We got this little this little window. Yeah, all this is gonna come out. Actually, I'm gonna take that back. This upper part, we're probably, uh, I'm trying not to fall. We'll probably leave this upper part, but we'll probably take out this inside piece, leave this piece and stuff. I don't know, we'll see. Not a whole lot of room up here in the front, but I do like these bench seat sections. Why does that protrude like that? Oh, because of the cabinets. Nice red. See, we got red, white, blue. Hey, wait, red, white, and blue. Ha. Ah. America. There's quite a few things I've found out that are kind of different between these two. Like that's Tombstone is a 46, so it has a lot of civilian stuff to it, I guess you can say, or more fine-tuned. And these were obviously in the war era, so it was kind of bare minimum, whatever, make them work. That's why there's a few differences, but there is a few things that are different. So See what we got for an engine. Like I said, this thing is complete, man. Like everything is here. We got stickers. That's good. But everything's here. When I was blowing this out the other day, there's actually still water coming out of the, 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 the coupler. I forgot English. Uh, obviously this is a six volt setup. We got a sweet siren down here, leaving that, that's staying. Missing a few little things, missing a trim, but it's fine. We'll get these lights and stuff working. I am, somebody might get mad, I don't know. I am gonna try to get this green off of here. I can live with the red and stuff like that, but this green, I hate it. It's, I don't like it. I like patina, okay? It, it is what it is. So we're going to see what we can do to save a lot of this patina and everything. But moving on to the rear. So I put this in here for support, as y'all know. But there's really not a whole lot to talk about back here. Other than we got a little bit of rot back there and stuff. But our main issues are where the extension is for all this so we need to really need to get all this fixed up need to get all of this into shape get it to where it needs to be because what they would do those wooden pieces those wooden pieces would go down here and they nailed it from the top and then there was a band and everything else and they didn't seal any of it so all that stuff rotted out all this stuff rotted out i'm about to cough <laughs> it's all that routed out but we'll weld it and actually make it better that's the plan at least uh this door i still haven't opened this door i haven't tried too too hard does this window actually roll down shut your mouth okay i'm not gonna try it because i don't want to break it but that's pretty neat i didn't wasn't expecting that to roll down sweet little cabinets but like i was saying on the other side this is what we're going to take out we're going to take out as much as this as we can but i want to leave as much as this part as we can if that makes sense so i want to leave a bunch of it but i want to take a bunch of it out so the main thing we're going to work on before we try to get this to run because i'm scared this stuff is going to get the truck going up and down or whatever you want to call this thing the ambulance ambulance going up and down and stuff it's constantly 
flexing. So I don't want to do more damage to this than that then that's already done. So I got some anchor bolts and I'm going to put them into this wood and I'm going to try to suck all this together and everything. I'm going to try to bring this together because I feel like it's actually I know it is it's folding out here. So I'm going to do that because for all I know it's going to this moving around is going to crack the glass whatever these are already messed up. I really 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 oh it's etched into it. I can feel it. How cool is that? So I really don't want to mess up these glass. And I, I'm scared. I'm scared it's going to happen. So, like I said, I got some rings we're going to put in there. I got some ratchet straps, camel ones, so you don't see them. And we're going to try to suck all this together and try to make it a little better. And then maybe, maybe try to do something up here with some welding. Because that's what I want to do. So that's what we're going to work on right now. And then we will try to get this thing running. And maybe drive it out of the shop. That would be pretty cool. Okay, so I gotta find wood that's connected the best. I think I'm gonna try, I think I'm gonna try here. In here, suck that together, and then maybe work my way down. I got camo, you know, so this can become permanent and nobody will ever see it. Little handle. Cool. Also, I want to dress something. Before people were like, finish the Duke, finish the Duke. Guys, I'm working on it. I just don't want another vehicle sitting here that doesn't run. And as complete as this is, I feel like I can get it running fairly easy. And if I can get it running and movable around the house, that'd be even better. Oh, look at that. It's already working. Oh, oh. It's perfect. Perfect. That's all she needed? I almost feel like I kind of went too far. Then over here. So I noticed when I lifted it up, it really opened the gap. So I need to probably tack it, go that way. And then look, I can actually take this out now. So I should probably do the same thing back here. Bring her together. The good thing is, we got a bunch of metal right here, so whenever I go to rebuild a lot of this, so when I go to rebuild all of this, uh, I have something to weld to. So I should do the same thing back here, right? Believe it, I found a rotten piece of wood. <laughs> this worked better than I thought it would. Wow. So, actually, looking at it, I was paying attention to this compared to this, and I went too far. So, hopefully when I undo this, it doesn't fall. Oh my. Oh, right there. Yeah, buddy. But I need to bring this gap together, so we'll let it down some more, put some weight on it. Get 
it over here. So my plan is, once I get it all tacked into place, I'm gonna take like some inch and a half flat bar and I'm gonna tack it along the bottom and I'm gonna fully weld it on top and then I'm gonna lay another one on top, like another, it'll be like double banded. And then I'll pinch and then I can seam seal it and we're done. And the roof will have pretty good structure and we can actually start building off of that and doing everything. Cause also when I go to do these outside sections, so they added all this wood cause normally these are solid. So they cut these windows and stuff in. So this is really mainly for like window trim and stuff. And then of course you have these upper structures and stuff to hold the door, but it's not a big concern. So what I'm going to do is once I build all that, I'm not going to weld it to the outside of the body. I'm going to use like panel bond or something, which is like, I don't know if y'all ever used panel bond. It is ridiculously strong. So I'll, pay, I'll build all this structure and I'll panel bond it to the inside and then where I can weld it and not get away with it messing up or messing with the outside of the, the body, I'll be okay. Like the roof and stuff, I really don't care. But the outside of the body is where, on the sides is where it matters to me. So now I'm gonna go eat dinner and then I'm gonna come back out here and we're actually gonna tack weld all of this and then we'll leave these straps you can't see these camo straps, you know, true small got camo. Uh, we'll leave these here and then we'll focus on getting it running and I'll know this stuff is pretty secure. That's my main concern. kind of tacked in place. I already know I'm going to have to make adjustments later, which is fine. Can't even reach that. Uh, I can tell there's a hump here, dips there, whatever. But like I said, I'm going to take that metal strap and go along the top and it'll bring everything to it and I'll get everything up to where I want it. But this right now makes it where everything's not so flimsy and could break more. Because every one of these conversions I've ever seen, like the that section's falling in and all kinds of stuff. So like I said, I wanted to do this before that fell in. And I think it's good enough for now. So now we can move on to Will It Run? We are back out here in the shop and it's time to see if we got a good engine or not. I feel like we have a good chance, so we'll see what we can do. I already took the hood off, just get that out of the way. Stickers, make everything better. Everything is still six volt, wires are pretty crusty, but should be all right. Uh, if we break these plug wires, I think I have the stuff to make similar plug wires. Uh, but I think the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pop these plug wires off, I'm gonna pull plugs, and I'm gonna put Marvel Mystery Oil down in the cylinders, cause it's been sitting a while. So we'll do that, get some of that down in there, just in case there's some rust build up. I found the hood springs. No good. But anyways, let's start pulling spark plugs. Put some oil down in there and then we'll grab this fan and see if we can turn it over by hand or not because I haven't even done that because I want to make sure everything's good before we go turning on it. And then start checking off the list of things that make it run. Went ahead and sprayed down the spark plugs and these wires. Let's try to get these wires without off without breaking them. Because uh that would be a miracle. All right. These spark plug wires are like porcelain. They're brittle. Right. 
And verdict number one is that actually does not look bad at all. There's no moisture or anything on it. There's no signs of rust. All right, cool no. Oh no, I dropped it. It broke. Champion. Once again, no sign of rust or anything. I need to get this battery out of here. No signs of rust. That's good. Uh, I has got a little bit down there. But all in all, not bad. Let's see if I can get these wires off without breaking them too. Nice. Looks good. Oh, that one's got a little bit. Not terrible. Uh, I might have did that bringing it out. They all look pretty good. I don't have a small enough funnel, so I got this gear oil bottle. We'll put this marble mystery oil in there. And we'll just squirt right down the cylinders. What's really in here is a mystery. Take that. Squirt. Squirt. Now that we got some oil in there, we can snatch onto this fan and see if anything happens. Oh, that turned like super easy. Okay. Okay. Oh, we got a little hard spot. Oh, man. Oh, look at her go. Look at her go. Man, that spins good. Well. We're not locked up. I can definitely smell that oil. It has a distinctive, like minty smell. Man, this thing spins good. This might be a good hot rod engine after all. All right. There's that. Man, if I can make this a runner, that would be so cool. Okay, now, is that even bolted? Okay. It's old, old bath air cleaner. These are pretty neat. The carb free? That's the choke, choke's open. This is throttle. Man, the inside of that carb is like super, super clean. So I know these fuel pumps are like a diaphragm style. So, and if they go bad, you can put like clicky clacky on there and like use it as like a regulator. That's how my 41 Ford was, but I just, do I put a battery in it and 
Do I hit it and see if the starter's working? Like, what do I do? I say we throw a battery in it and we bump the starter button and we'll see if the starter engages. Cause if not, that's gonna be something we have to address right off the bat. So let's put this battery in it. You really shouldn't put a 12 volt battery in a six volt system, but guys, it's fine. So, there's our ground, which is too small. Ooh, you know what? Yeah, why? They have these backwards. That's the start of some... What is going on here? Hang on. This is brown. That's red. I must have worked on this before. Ugh. Wow, it's a strong zip tie. Fire test. She's juiced. Do we just go hit the starter button? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. So this is really dumb on my part because there's no plugs in there and I put oil in there, but I'm just gonna give it a little bumperoo. Not doing anything. Oh, 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 oh. straight to the starter. Starter works. So now we need to figure out why the button inside ain't working. But the starter works, so that's good. I didn't want to like crank on it because like I said, you really shouldn't put 12 volts on six volts because it really that starter is gonna be a singing. I mean, and then it's gonna smoke. Uh so I think what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna check all these, I'm gonna pull all these grounds off, clean off all these grounds, do all that stuff, and then we'll go back and we'll see if we can get the button to work. And then we'll check for spark. And maybe put some fuel in it? I don't know, I'm kinda scared. Actually, I haven't even checked the oil in this thing. I forgot where the dipstick is. There it is. Looks good. Looks like molasses. That's what that's what these old girls like. This switch. Luckily back in the day they built this stuff to be worked on. This switch has a lot of corrosion and everything else in it. So we'll get all this cleaned up.
and then hopefully we'll have power to the coil i haven't even checked it yet but being that i couldn't even engage the starter from in here tells me some stuff's going on so sure enough i popped it apart got a bunch of corrosion and everything else in it look at that but they are simple I need to clean that. Oh, okay, that button sits there. All right. All right, all right. I see. I see what's going on here. All right. There we go. We have that working. That one's not working. That's for the, the gauges. But we got the coil working, we assume. All right, let's go see if we have power at the coil. Let's see if we got power here. We do not. Help if I had that on. And we have power at the coil. So, switch is working, so now, if stuff goes haywire, we have a way to kill ignition. So that was my main concern with the switch. Now, let's tinker with the button to see if we can get the starter to engage from inside. Okay, always remember to have good grounds. I'm pretty sure this ground strap right here is like total junk. So I ran a ground straight to the battery, and these solenoids are not like a traditional solenoid. They're, they don't take a 12 volt, they take a ground. So when you hit a ground, they open and close. Simple. That's how they did it back in the day. So now, let's hit the button, see what happens. Oh, well, see? Ah. Well, she cranks over with the button. So that means, that means we put some plugs in it. We check for fire. And if anything, I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find points and condensers for this thing, but let's put some plugs in it. Or actually we can set a plug on it, crank it over. See if we got some fire. I got a plug hooked up. Let's crank it and see. And nothing. It's kind of what I figured. Uh, see if we can get to the points, clean them up. Hopefully the condenser is not bad. But I think I have an engine over there with a condenser on it. If we have to, we can steal it. So I went ahead and popped the radiator out of this thing. And let me tell you this. If it didn't leak before, it does now. Man, that sucker got in a fight. And I won. Alright. A little bit of corrosion. How are the points look? Yeah. So it's kind of hard for y'all to see down here, but this has dual points. There's that side, there's that side. That side isn't moving very much. It might be on an open state though. Let me see. Now you really can't see it. That side seems really tight. See how much this side moves? But I'm gonna make sure these have power going to them because it could be the capacitor, condenser. Ah.
So we got power to that one. Power to that one. So they got power. Definitely got power. Went ahead and I just pulled the distributor out of it because these, they're pretty simple. They just got that, that lines up to that in there. It's not like you can do an advance and everything else. But, see, these points. Got a lot of corrosion there. Eh, that ain't too bad. But we'll get all these cleaned up. We'll get everything cleaned in here. I'm gonna take this out, pull the plate, pull everything out, set everything up, put it back together, clean it all up, and hopefully it'll be good. I got this capacitor off of Gilligan's old original engine, so hopefully that will work. That is a condenser, not a capacitor, just kidding. So we'll do that. See, and this has this little snap ring in here. All this stuff comes out. So I'm going to clean this up, and I'll be back. Now we're going to set our point gap. It's just like everything else. Turn the rotor right to the top of the ridge. And then, take a few of the gauges, which these call for 14 to 16. So we're going to do fitting. If I have a 15, 12. How is there not a 15 in here? Yeah, just kidding. Just kidding. Where's my screwdriver? So we'll loosen these up. Take our feeler gauge. Stick it in there. Like so. That one's good. Control this one. That one's good. Yep. So, we're good to go. So, we gotta make sure this can go back in. I guess I forgot to mention, uh, whenever you do this, you can loosen these up and you can turn these and it acts as a little cam in and out. But, it's fine. So we'll go ahead and we'll stab this back on. Uh, I need to put the capacitor back on it. Why do I keep calling it a capacitor? Condenser, my gosh. I guess I'm thinking of Back to the Future or something. I, I don't know. I just, I, just, I just don't know, okay? And one thing I thought about earlier, I didn't even test the coil. But, to eliminate any kind of maybes, I have another one. It's a used, but it's another one. It's a used another one. <laughs> funny. So funny. Okay. Uh, we'll dab some silicone on here, which somebody already did. Scary thing about this is getting this coil wire out. Without breaking it. Why do I feel like that's backwards? Spark, baby. Yeah. All right. So we'll blow this out, put some plugs in it. We're going to clean up all the plugs and we're going to just square it in there and see what happens. Well, let's see what happens. Do a little starting fluid in there. Why is it got that there? Probably way too much. Let's see if it. Tries to pop off or see what it does. 
I'll try to be quick on the ignition switch to kill it if anything happens. Nothing happened. Wait a minute. I'm actually gonna rig up a way to start from out here. gas for this thing it doesn't I don't think it likes this actual gasoline we'll see what that does They go to a Mustang, but I think I can make them work. Maybe. I feel like I can. Just cut these boots off, make them straight, go into there. But, I didn't think about it. I don't have the choke on. So let's see what it does with the choke. It ran. He just wanted to be choked. Weird. All right. Maybe it doesn't need plugs and wires. It needs a carb job. But. 
That's freaking awesome. Actually. So let's see what it does when I unchoke it a little bit now. That's where it gets me. Ah, I blew a bunch of stuff in my face. Okay, well, we established it will start, it has spark. So I need plugs and I really need wires. But I guess I'm gonna go ahead and pull this carburetor off and see what we can do there because I'm pretty sure it's leaking gas down here. So it's got vacuum leaks and stuff everywhere. So it's not gonna run good at all. But there's nothing open today. So I'm gonna have to go tomorrow to get plugs and wires and I'm probably gonna have to make my own gaskets and stuff, but we'll get back to this tomorrow, which is super exciting actually. All right, I can't resist it. Let's see if we can get it to run longer. You know, it's just one of those things. She just wants to run, boys. All right, now, that's what we're gonna call it for today because that is a success. So tomorrow, we're not even gonna mess with plugs and wires. We're gonna mess with that carburetor, uh, rig us up a fuel system, see if we can get it to fire up and idle on its own and stay running. And we'll throw some wheels and tires on this thing and see if we can drive it out of the shop. That's a good day. I don't care what everybody says.